ESPN, those guys have all the fun. First thing you'll notice about this book is it's 702 pages. So that's why it's very good for you to be here for a synopsis. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is this is absolutely a business book. It is one of the most successful businesses that actually started off as who would ever watch a, a channel that was doing this into a, just a significant revenue producing highly profitable company that has really moved on. So the format of this book is really strange, uh, y'all. They did um, 500 interviews with people who had been associated with ESPN over the years. And so you have all of these blurbs of uh, what people have said, you know, like Brent Musburger and Tom Meese and, and all these personalities. And then interspersed with that in italics is um, commentary from the authors bridging the interview. So it's primarily a set of interviews, and then uh, you have the uh, interspersing of that information. That is what you need to fool somebody you read the book yourself. That information is based on interviews, and you have it interspersed. Now, the chapters I put on the presentation outline because they do it chronologically, and very interesting, uh, provocative titles, as you see here. And then, throughout the book, they uh, give the nine steps, it's, it's chronological, to the rise in world dominance for ESPN. What did they do to grow and how did they become profitable? And so these are the nine steps you see on the presentation outline that have moved ESPN into a rise of world dominance. And even if you do not follow sports, uh, it is just a, an amazing uh, rise to the top of what these people did and a lot of innovation and a lot of fun. Last, I just want to call your attention to these two things. The idea that how much revenue there is, because advertising didn't do it. It was the addition of cable um, subscriber fees. And whether you know it or not, it says here that $4 of every monthly cable bill goes to ESPN, including viewers who've never watched a single telecast in your life. And some of you may be here in this room who've never watched ESPN. Sorry about that you're paying for it. You know? <laughs> and then uh, loyalty, 40 employees from ESPN would still be there 31 years later. And then I put here from the book, as the time the book was written, uh, how big this is how many channels there are, how many programming hours there are, and so forth. And the quotes you see today, ESPN is worth more than the entire NFL, worth more than Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NHL combined. It is very profitable and very, very successful. And then um, what I also did for you on the outline was, I just went through the book and I gave you a chronology of uh, what I thought were the important events in the uh, birth and life of uh, ESPN. And if you happen to want to spend well, this book, 702 pages, y'all might wonder, why did you leave that out? And that was important too. Uh, but I picked what I thought were the highlights. And uh, if I didn't do a good job, well, this is my synopsis. You know, so <laughs> uh, but uh, I, it's, it's, it's an amazing book. I almost hate to give it away, y'all. It's, uh, it's really a, a, a very fascinating book. And, and it's a great story of success. I mean, you all think about it. Who would have ever thought this thing would have made? A 24-hour channel that started off showing Canadian Football League replays. Yeah. That, that's what they were doing, you know, and, and because they didn't have rights to anything that was major. And, and uh, who would want to watch uh, these two anchors talk about sports, you know, for 24 hours? Now look, today, there's eight channels. Even last night when I got home, I watched ESPN3 on my computer, which is now called ESPN Watch, and I just fast-forwarded the end of a football game. So y'all, it's, it's in our face. It's a great story of success. Whoever wins this book, I uh, hope you really enjoy it. Uh, the interviews are fun. I hope you enjoyed that synopsis of ESPN. Thank you.